Meme stocks like AMC and GameStop are once again getting a lot of attention. And though they can skyrocket in the short term, their volatility is a concern for investors looking for steady outperformance. But for those who want to ride the wave of what's trending, there's an ETF for that the recently launched FOMO ETF. Joining me now to discuss is Matthew Tuttle. He is CEO and CIO of Tuttle Capital Management. Thanks so much for joining me today, Matthew. Thank you for having me. So first of all, FOMO is uh, definitely a catchy phrase out there right now, the fear of missing out. And I think investors, many investors experience that. Sound investing is based on rules, but emotion is also a very big part of investing. So give us your take on how investors can actually use this FOMO to their advantage. Yeah, so there's so much going on right now in markets, more than we've ever seen. So you've got the meme stocks, you've got the crypto, you've got the value stocks. So what FOMO is designed to do is allow investors to get access to all of those areas, And then going forward, whatever happens to be the hot area, because it's going to change, you know, over time, but to do it in a a smarter way. So, you know, we're going to have the game stops, we're going to have the AMCs, we're going to have some of the Bitcoin things and the blockchain things, but we're going to weight those according to downside volatility. So, you know, we're never going to have a a situation where we're in a whole bunch of stuff in, in large amounts that that gets you crushed. Yeah, I think that might be a concern for some investors with these meme stocks is just how wild that they are. But it seems like in the ETF form, you can dilute that uh, a little bit here. But you think that still having these uh, stocks in an ETF is, is worth doing? Oh, without a doubt, because we can also balance them out against different things. So if you've got a portfolio that's got GameStop and AMC, which which ours does, but then you've also got value stocks in there. Um, you know, you've got other types of stocks in there. That that's going to really smooth out your returns, and we're going to be able to put in, you know, the right amount, you know, based on risk versus return of the GameStops and the AMCs. So you're looking at the hot areas of the market, and if you're really agile, how how are you able to spot that shift as it's happening into these various areas? So, and that's where the agility comes in. We rebalance the portfolio on a weekly basis. So we've got computer algorithms that run every week that are looking for the stocks that are in, in the strongest uptrend. But what we're also doing is we're looking at stocks that maybe previously have been doing well, but have sold off recently. Because the way that the markets work, typically what happens is at some point, whatever's hot, the money flows out of that, they take the profits and they go back into, you know, whatever is sold off recently. So that, that's another thing that we do. And again, that happens every Monday. So it allows us to really stay in harmony with what's going on in the market. And sometimes I think investors, when they think fear of missing out, it's uh, investments that have already made big moves. So how do you make sure that the FOMO ETF is really staying ahead of the curve and not trying to catch up after these stocks have already made big moves and might be likely to pull back? So a couple of things. First off, by having that counter trend piece. So we're buying stocks that maybe made big moves in the past, but have recently sold off. Or buying them when they're low instead of buying them when they're high. The other thing we do is the trend following part of the portfolio. We're not just looking at price, we're looking at price and volatility. So a stock that you know maybe went up 50% but did it with a lot of volatility might not even make the portfolio. Then the third thing we're doing is when we're looking at the, the strongest trending stocks, we're taking out the most recent few days. So what we don't want is a stock just popped 50% yesterday, and now we're buying it today. So that 50% pop yesterday, we wouldn't even consider. It would come right out of the algorithm. 
So being very tactical with that. Uh, investors yeah. also interested in another hot area outside the meme stocks, and that is SPACs. So how do you think investors should be looking at the, the SPAC market? There's uh, a lot of buzz, but there could be a lot of volatility there too. W without a doubt. The first thing they've got to understand is there's a difference between a pre-merger SPAC and a company that came public out of a SPAC merger. Totally different thing. The volatility you're really going to see in companies that came out of SPAC mergers, and you know those are the companies: your Quantumscapes, your Lordstown Motors, your DraftKings, your Nikola. Those are the companies that are going to be really volatile. Some interesting opportunities now in some of those companies. We have a, an index called the D SPAC Index. 25 of the of the largest companies that have come out of D SPAC mergers a good chance that a lot of those companies are going to end up being put into Russell indexes this month when the Russell rebalances. So that creates a real interesting opportunity because investors are going to be forced to buy a lot of these companies that they don't own right now. Hmm. So taking a step back and looking at this from a portfolio management angle, Investors no doubt want to capture these hot areas of the market in their portfolio. How do you think ETFs like FOMO and DSPAC fit into an overall portfolio? So FOMO fits into a portfolio depending on you know, an investor's tolerance for risk, but it really ought to be 10 to 40% of any portfolio. And I say 40% because it's not going to be as volatile as a lot of the other thematic things out there. We have a pre-merger SPAC ETF, SPCX, which you know, should also be in every investor's portfolio. It's an uncorrelated asset class to the market. The DSPAC ETFs, those are going to be rocket fuel. You know, those are going to be ETFs that can do, I mean, the, the DSPAC index, it's going to move. It's going to move a lot. We've got a long ETF on it. We've got a short ETF on it. I can't tell you what direction it's going to move, but I can tell you it's going to move. And so we've got two different ways to play that. And that, that's more for traders who are looking at the DSPAC area and deciding, hey, do I want to be long these names or do I want to be short? Well, definitely things to keep in mind as investors dig a little deeper into these ETFs. Matthew, thanks so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Hi there. Thanks so much for watching Investing Strategies on our YouTube channel. If you want more executive interviews and analysis of key trends to watch, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date.